Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about nuclear weapons and specifically the capabilities of the United Kingdom. Now, the United Kingdom was the third country in the world after the USA and the Soviet Union to develop nuclear weapons capability back in 1952. And since that time, it's been one of the prominent nuclear powers. But the thing with nuclear weapons is that they have to be an effective deterrent. If you've got them and somebody else has them, then basically you cancel each other out. Nobody wants to be the first one to deploy a nuclear weapon if the opposition has it, because that will result in counter-strikes and mutually assured destruction for everybody involved. But in order for the nuclear deterrent to work, your nuclear weapons have to actually work themselves. And the United Kingdom recently undertook a test which was a complete disaster. It didn't function at all. And this is now the second consecutive test that the UK has done, which has been a complete failure. And these tests are very expensive. A Trident missile, which is what the nuclear warheads are loaded onto, costs around $20 million for one of them. And to launch a test missile, it will cost around $25 million, including all of the permits, getting everybody involved. And so this isn't something that is taken lightly. And the fact that the UK has failed in its two most recent tests, and those tests were in 2024 and 2016, so they're not doing this on a regular basis, it's once every eight years. The fact that they failed with both of those tests is now raising alarm bells that the nuclear deterrent that the UK has is no longer effective. So in today's video, I want to dig down into the details as to what's going on here. So we'll have a look at which countries have nuclear weapons, and there are only nine currently. We'll then talk about the UK's nuclear deterrent program. And you may be surprised to hear that the UK doesn't actually have any land or air-based nuclear weapons all of its nuclear weapons are focused on submarines. And in fact, only one submarine at any one time is deployed with an arsenal of nuclear weapons. So that's quite a small and specific area that it's looking to use its nuclear weapons from. We'll then talk about the Trident missile program, which are the missiles that these warheads are actually fitted onto. And these are the missiles that keep failing from the UK's point of view. We'll then go on to talk about the test failures that the UK has encountered over the last eight years. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think the implications of these test failures are in terms of the UK's credibility, and what this means in terms of the potential risks of some form of nuclear strike happening, because obviously the UK is part of NATO, which involves the USA, which has a much larger arsenal of nuclear weapons. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's supporting the channel. If you've bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks recently, thank you so much. I genuinely appreciate every single one of those. And if you've signed up as a patron or a member, you're providing me with long-term support and it really does help to keep this channel going. So thank you so much. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, there are only nine nations that officially have nuclear weapons. Do you think you can name all nine of them? See if you can, and let's have a look at the chart and see if you're right. This map of the world shows the estimated global nuclear warhead inventory as at the end of 2023. And as you can see, the country that has the most nuclear warheads at the moment is Russia, with an estimated total of 5,889, closely followed by the United States, which has 5,244. And between them, Russia and the USA hold around 89% of the total global supply of warheads. The country with the next largest amount of warheads is China, with 410, followed by France at 290, the United Kingdom at 225, Pakistan at 170, India at 164, Israel have 90, and North Korea is the most recent country to have developed nuclear weapons capability, and they're estimated to have 30 warheads currently. And in terms of where those nuclear weapons are actually located, this map of the world shows the estimate of the operationally deployed nuclear weapons, which are shown by the dark blue circles on this map. So you can see that there are quite a number of operationally deployed nuclear weapons 
in the USA, and those weapons have been deployed and are designed to be launched on long-range missiles to defend the USA. Now, if you're looking for somewhere safe to move to in the event of a potential nuclear war, then you may want to consider South America or Africa or Australia, because there are no operationally deployed nuclear weapons in any of those locations. None of those countries actually have nuclear weapons capabilities, and therefore there haven't been any nuclear weapons deployed there. So in the event of a nuclear war, where all of the countries that do have nuclear weapons decide to start nuking each other, it would make sense to be living in one of those zones. But if you prefer to live on the edge and stay close to operationally deployed nuclear weapons, then you may want to consider moving to Europe because as you can see, there are a lot of blue dots on this map located in Europe. And some of those weapons are as a result of the UK and France having nuclear weapon capability. But also because of the NATO alliance and the fact that the USA is a member of NATO, some of the USA's nuclear warheads have been located in Europe in order to make sure that those weapons can strike Russia in the event of some form of nuclear war. And you can also see that there are quite a number of operationally deployed nuclear weapons in Asia as a result of China, India and Pakistan and also obviously Russia having that capability and deploying their weapons ready for use. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, the UK's nuclear deterrent is focused entirely on submarines. The UK has scrapped any nuclear weapons that are launched from the land or that are dropped by planes, and they only use weapons that are based on submarines. And the UK has based its whole strategy on only four submarines, and only one of those submarines is actually deployed on missions at any one time. This table, which was published by the British government in a paper in May 2023, confirms that the UK's nuclear deterrent has three elements. Four Vanguard-class submarines, which maintain continuous at-sea deterrent, Trident II D-5 missiles, which are deployed aboard the submarines and held in a communal pool with the US, situated in Kings Bay Submarine Base in Georgia, and MK-4A nuclear warheads, which are deployed on the Trident II DS missiles. And the whole idea around this strategy is that one submarine is out on manoeuvres at any one time, and nobody is aware where that submarine is. And in the event of something happening, the UK becoming involved in some form of nuclear standoff, a nuclear missile would be launched directly from that submarine. And the concept behind all of this is that because nobody knows where that submarine is located, it could be right next to where you are and it could effectively blow up a nuclear warhead within a matter of minutes. That's the theory anyway. In terms of what happens with the other submarines, one of them is undergoing maintenance at any one time, and two of them are held in port or on training manoeuvres. So let's have a quick look at one of these Vanguard submarines. HMS Vigilant, one of the UK's four Vanguard nuclear submarines. HMS Vigilant carries the Trident ballistic missile, the nuclear weapon, the ultimate insurance policy. This is the missile compartment right in the centre of the submarine. The missiles are stored in 16 tubes either side here vertically so they can be fired out of the top of a submarine and each missile can carry a maximum of 12 nuclear warheads on it. Fire, 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 fire the on board they regularly train for the worst case scenario. Everybody involved in the firing chain takes part, including the Prime Minister. The Vanguard submarines come to the end of their life in 2028. To retain a constant at-sea deterrent, four new replacement submarines must be built. Nuclear weapons are explosive devices that take their powerful and destructive force from nuclear reactions, and only two of these have ever been used in warfare in world history, back at the end of World War II, when the USA developed all of its nuclear capabilities in what was called the Manhattan Project, which you may have seen in the Oppenheimer movie, and they dropped two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the first of which was uranium-based, and the second was plutonium based. So you take radioactive material to give you that explosive nuclear reaction. 
But since then, over 2,000 tests have been taken on various nuclear weapons, but none of them have involved the deliberate destruction of mankind. So all of the nine countries that we looked at in the previous section have developed nuclear weapons capability. But in order to make that into an effective weapon, you need to put that on a warhead and attach it to a missile so you can make sure that that nuclear explosion takes place exactly where you want it to. And in the UK back in the 1980s when Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister, the country signed a deal with the USA to use the Trident missiles for delivery of nuclear warheads. And this diagram shows the breakdown of how a Trident missile is put together and as you can see, it has a large motor at the bottom, which is used to propel the missile initially. And we'll have a look at the flight of the missile in a minute. In addition to the motor at the bottom, there is a secondary motor, which is designed to do the second stage of the missile's flight. On top of the second motor is all of the technical equipment, which is involved in making sure that the missile flies in the right direction and hits the target that it's intended to. And then above all of these sections, we have the actual explosive part of the missile. And at the very cone of the missile is where you can fit the nuclear warheads. And if we have a look at this graphic, it shows how the missiles will be launched from the submarines. So initially a gas is used to propel the missile out of the water into the air. At that point, the large motor at the bottom of the missile ignites and starts to launch the missile high up into the air. As soon as the missile is at an appropriate height, the large motor at the bottom falls away and the secondary motor then ignites and takes control of the missile. At this stage, the missile is then traveling at up to 13,600 miles per hour. Depending on how far the missile is actually being launched, it may actually exit the Earth's atmosphere and at this point uses a guidance system to make sure that it's traveling in the right direction. And once the missile comes back into the Earth's atmosphere, it can then be directed to make sure it hits its intended target. And as you can see on this graphic, Trident missiles are estimated to have a reliable range of up to 4,600 miles. However, it is claimed that they can be launched up to 7,500 miles. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, Trident missiles are very expensive. They cost around $20 million each. So if you're undertaking a test, you want to make sure that you put everything in place to make sure it's as reliable as possible. You don't want to waste one of these tests because they're extremely expensive. And over the last 12 years, the UK has undertaken three Trident missile tests. Now, obviously, when you undertake a test, you don't actually fix nuclear warheads to the missile. You don't want to actually set off a nuclear bomb. That's not allowed anymore. So what you do is put a dummy bomb that replicates the same weight as you would have in a real nuclear warhead, but you're not actually sending anything dangerous. You're just sending the missile to make sure that it goes exactly where you want it to. So let's have a look at the last successful test that the UK undertook, which was back in 2012. So that's what a successful test looks like. But unfortunately for the UK, the last two tests that it's undertaken have been entirely unsuccessful. Back in 2016, the UK undertook a test whereby it was looking to launch the missile over a range of around 3,000 miles. And it veered off course significantly and landed hundreds of miles away from its intended destination. And at that time, Theresa May was Prime Minister of the UK 
it was not long after the Brexit referendum was held where the UK voted in favour of leaving the European Union, which resulted in the previous Prime Minister, David Cameron, to resign from his job. And Theresa May was under a lot of pressure at the time because of the failed Trident test. And she said that it wasn't a problem, it was just a blip, an anomaly, and it didn't impact on the UK's credibility as a nuclear force. But unfortunately, the most recent test in 2024 has also been a complete disaster. This is what the Royal Navy would have been hoping for. A successful underwater test fire by one of its nuclear deterrent submarines back in 2012. Instead, last month, a Trident missile misfired and crashed into the ocean off the coast of Florida. A major embarrassment that raises serious security questions. The Ministry of Defence blamed an anomaly during the drill and insisted Trident remains safe, secure and effective. A spokesperson said, as a matter of national security, we cannot provide further information on this. However, we are confident that the anomaly was event specific and therefore there are no implications for the reliability of the wider Trident missile systems and stockpile. The Defence Secretary Grant Shapps was reportedly on board HMS Vanguard during the drill, along with the head of the Navy. A source told the Sun newspaper the Trident II missile left the submarine, but it just went plop right next to them. With global security tensions running high, the failure will doubtless be watched with keen interest by enemies and concern by the UK's friends. Keeping one of the Navy's four nuclear-armed submarines continuously at sea is the cornerstone of Britain's defences. A top-secret mission that cannot afford to show any sign of weakness. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think the issue of nuclear weapons and nuclear deterrent is more relevant today than it has been at any point in the last 50 years. At the end of the Cold War, the nuclear threat fell dramatically. And over the last 30 or 40 years, it's been very low. There hasn't really been any chance of anybody starting a nuclear war. However, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there have been a lot of threats made subtly by President Putin, reminding the world that Russia has nuclear weapons and that it will vehemently defend itself if it sees that somebody is stepping into its territory. And let's not forget that Russia has officially declared that all of the occupied territory in Ukraine is now formally part of Russia. So it sees any invasion into those areas as being an attack on Russia. So in theory, the potential for a nuclear strike is now higher than it's been at any point in most of our lifetimes. But obviously the main reason why a nuclear war is unlikely to happen is that it's guaranteed that most people will die. And therefore you'd have to be absolutely insane to push the red button and start some sort of nuclear fight. However, all of that is dependent on the fact that everybody has nuclear weapons that are capable of being launched. And what we've talked about in today's video is that the UK, which was the third country to develop nuclear weapons and has been a major player on the nuclear front for the last 70 years, it's been undertaking tests and those tests have been a complete disaster. And these aren't regular tests. These are things that are taken every five or six years. So over the last 12 years, the UK has undertaken three tests and the last two have failed to deliver in terms of sending that missile where it was meant to go to. So what that indicates is that if there was a nuclear war and the UK decided that it needed to send a nuclear weapon to somewhere like Russia, there is a genuine chance that it might not actually get there. If it follows what happened recently at the test, it would literally just land in the water next to the submarine, which obviously wouldn't be good news for either the people in that submarine or anybody in the UK because their nuclear missile would have completely failed. And as we talked about, the UK only has one submarine that's on manoeuvres at any one point that has those nuclear weapons. So it's entirely dependent on those weapons getting where they need to be. 
But the overriding issue here isn't whether or not those weapons actually work. It's the perception as to whether or not the UK is now a credible force in terms of being able to strike back in the event that somebody else launched weapons against the UK. Now, in reality, there probably isn't that much of an issue because, as I mentioned right at the start of today's video, the UK is in NATO and the USA is a member of NATO. And as we saw from the graphic earlier in today's video, there are lots of US warheads reportedly located in Europe. And as a result of that, the USA could authorise strikes as soon as anything did happen in Europe. So the UK potentially could be protected by being part of NATO and therefore an ally of the USA. However, the whole point of having your own nuclear weapons is that you want to have your own deterrent. You need to make sure everybody is aware that you've got them and you can use them at a minute's notice. And the fact that the last two tests have failed for the UK's point of view is a complete embarrassment. And as I've mentioned, these weapons cost around $20 million. These Trident missiles are not cheap. So when you organize a test, there is a lot of planning and authorization that goes into it. So to just say that it was an anomaly, it was something that they didn't expect to happen, isn't really a very good excuse. And the other excuse that's been used by the UK is that because the warhead wasn't a real warhead, it was just a dummy, that's the reason why the missile didn't go where they intended it to. But if you're planning a test, surely you would replicate everything about that warhead that you could. So it would be the same weight and size and everything should be identical to what's going to happen in the event that you need to launch for real. So the credibility here has definitely fallen. To say it doesn't really matter that the tests are failing in the event of a real war, all of our missiles would land exactly where they're meant to go, I think is a stretch of the imagination. Because if none of your tests are working, why would the real thing be 100% accurate? That just doesn't make sense. It's not logical at all to say that. So the overall summary of today's video is that the UK has been a major player in nuclear weapons for a long period of time. However, its credibility has been seriously undermined by the two most recent test failures. And when I say most recent, I'm talking about 2024 and 2016. So over the last eight years, they haven't had a successful launch of a test weapon since 2012. That's a very long time ago. And so the fact that its credibility has been undermined does weaken the UK's security position and raises the possibility of Russia thinking that it could launch some sort of action against the UK without having an immediate counter-strike. Obviously, as it's a member of NATO, it would then draw in the rest of NATO, which includes the USA, which has a huge arsenal of nuclear weapons. So I don't think Russia would do that. But what it does do is confirm that the UK is more reliant on the USA and its arsenal of nuclear weapons than it is on its own capabilities until it can prove that it has weapons that actually work and can deliver exactly what they're meant to. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode, you found it useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end and here's something to put a smile on your face.